hey guys welcome back to the channel so in this video i'm going to show you how to weld stainless steel with stick welding and these are all the items which you need to do the stick welding so onto my channel i post a lot of videos regarding the stainless steel and you can check those videos in the description section and uh, people keep asking me about some tips and techniques so I decided to build a video onto this topic so I try my best to teach you as best as I can but in the end I wanted to suggest you that if you want to do some sort of business thing then it's good to have a thick welding as compared to this so this is called the auto darkening welding goggle in the, if you want to do the welding in open environment it is extremely useful and also lightweight so this is the die which is used to find out the grade of stainless steel and uh, if the die turns green to red it means that the grade is 202 if it changes from green to transparent then it means that it is 304 in my case all of the material belongs to 202 grade so these are the two marking instrument which you can use to mark the 45 degree angle onto the stainless steel pipes for the mitre joint and sometime i use this correction pen for the marking purpose although it's advised to use the carbide scriber for a better and accurate result so this tool is called combination square and sometime when i have to work without the chop saw then I usually use this and transfer the and then transfer the marking onto both side so that I am able to take the reference from those markings to get a better result second method is to draw a line and then use the same piece to draw a parallel line and then draw a diagonal to make a 45 degree angle but make sure to take care of the orientation of that mitre cut and now you are easily able to cut these pieces at an angle with the angle grinder So the second type of material used in guardrails is the round pipe and uh, I don't have uh, enough length so I'm going to cut down this pipe into three sections and for the marking I am using this tape technique in which I draw the markings onto the surface of pipe and then wrap the tape around those dots and then cut it with angle grinder. Later on I sanded it onto the grinding wheel to make it completely flush and flat. The first type of joint I'm going to show you is the T joint. The first thing I do is mark the line for the alignment and then I divide the pipe into four quadrants. By following those points I draw the straight line onto the surface of the pipe and then I measure the diameter of the pipe which is 50 millimeter and for the notching process you need to use one third of the diameter and then transfer that distance onto the periphery of the pipe like what I do here now you have to do is that choose any of the two opposite top points and then join them with the bottom of the remaining two points up to which we draw that circumference 
and they made a shape like an English letter V and you need to remove that highlighted area with the help of angle grinder After cutting has been completed the shape you get have a sharp corners and to fit them onto the pipe surface you need to curve those areas and that has been done with the help of this flap disc and always make sure to have a used flap disc for this purpose because it has a slight curve onto it and that curve is extremely useful in attaining that precise fit. After that most of the work is all about eyeballing so the second type of notch is that in which you have to make a mark at an angle the procedure is almost the same except the starting so the first thing you have to do is place the pipe at an angle after placing that you will find an open space onto the other end and you have to measure that distance and transfer it onto the pipe make sure to mark the two opposite ends onto the face of the pipe now you need to join the top of one end to the bottom of the opposite end where we mark the circumference you can use a flexible straight edge to join the two points together that will give you a much precise line for cutting and it is good to use a thin marker or a scriber for marking to get a better results I am using a marker because it's hard to capture them on my phone you have to do it for both sides like a letter V now you can cut it at an angle after this all the steps are same like I did for the T joint the only difference is that you have to use this now at an angle similar thing marks the four quadrants and then straight lines from those quadrants then I measure one third of the pipe diameter, transfer that and join the lines. So after highlighting the cutting area, I cut it with the help of angle grinder and again I get some straight lines. So I'm going to use flap disc to get a concave curves onto the pipe so that it will be easily fitted onto the top of the convex shape of the pipe. So if you don't have a pipe notcher and wanted to notch your pipe then I have to say that this method is fairly simple to attain a good joint onto the round pipe and yeah definitely most of the work is all about eyeballing but if you have a good marking onto the pipe the result will be much better as compared to the freehand cutting. So definitely give some approach to this method to get a better result in notching the pipe. project the main key feature is to cap the job as square as possible as you can and sometimes it is not easy to use those set square to measure the straightness of the of the frame so in that case you can measure the diagonals and if they are equal it means that the frame is in square so after clamping the job I start the tack welding and uh, here I have a small gap and to avoid the blowhole I use this filler rod and then made a tag well onto it whenever I am using electrode as a filler rod I always remove outer covering of the filler rod and then use it to minimize the gap between the joint by doing this the chances of blowholes are almost neglected and the reason for removing that coating is to avoid more deposition of slag formation onto the weld joint. 
so here you can see how i avoid those continuous long wells because if i kept it for a long time then it will overheat the metal surface and end it up with a large blow hole so once you start the welding joint make sure to weld opposite joints first to avoid any kind of thermal warpage because when the joint cools down it slightly shrinks pulls everything towards the inside direction so the second method is to take another piece of welding electrode and place it over the joint and then strike the arc onto the electrode and that will prevent the blow hole formation and ended up with a good result and the only disadvantage of this method is that the weld bead is slightly thick in size as compared to previous method. So here you can see during the welding I get some blow holes and uh, I try to avoid them and then I'm going to fill them once the material has been cooled down. The weld looks quite ugly but we can fix it during the grinding process but before that take a look onto the weld beads. And this is the weld joint in which I use the filler rod, extra filler rod and the size of the bead is slightly thick as compared to the other one. After that I weld the legs. So to grind the weld joints I always use this flexible grinding wheel. It is made for grinding stainless steel and it is flexible also. The material removal rate is much faster as compared to 60 grit flap disc. Most of the time flap disc burns the metal if you kept using it for a couple of minutes. But this wheel is absolutely stunning and gives nice result. Another advantage is that it's thinner than the flap disc. You can easily make the fillets. But you need to learn how to grind so most of the time I always try to grind down the higher spots and leave the rest for the 120 grit flap disc. This will speed up the process and if you are working on a larger build then this is a huge time saver. I always try to use new wheels for the further finishing because the wheels have a larger radius and made a less surface contact. So end result is a straight grind. You can see instead of horizontal grind, I tilt the grinder at 90 degree. I found that this way the process is much easier to carry it out. And this will also avoid grinding of material near that well joint. Which is much more difficult to avoid in horizontal grinding. By this method you are targeting onto a particular spot instead of whole area. If there are small lines left somehow then don't try to flush them with the remaining surface because you are ended up ruining your joint. So you can finish it with the scotch bright wheel. After 120 gate I switch to scotch bright wheel although I know it's not the right way to do the grid size lie around 400 to 600 grit. But around my area I didn't able to find any grid size which lie between 120 to 400 grit so I have to jump onto the scotch right wheel so this is the grinding result after five minutes and I think it's quite acceptable as compared to the previous stage but if you increase the grid size progressively then definitely you are able to get a much nicer result as compared to this So the areas where the welding is not going to be visible I always try to avoid grinding them and instead of grinding I use this pickling agent and it is used to remove those burn scales and you can then easily finish them with the buffing wheel only and if it's hard to remove those burn marks then you can use a brass wire brush 
to remove that black oxidation from the metal surface. So after this the only work left is to buff down the surface and for that I, I heat the surface with the buffing pad and then gently apply that buffing compound and with that heat that compound melts onto the surface and helps to remove the material at, at much faster rate as compared to rubbing that buffing compound directly onto the buffing wheel. That's all about finishing process of stainless steel. Hopefully I help you to learn something about welding with stick welding onto stainless steel and uh, I try my best to illustrate you as best as I can and if somehow something left then make sure to leave your comment in the comment section down below I extremely grateful to help you guys in the end if you like this video then make sure to hit the like button and if you are new to the channel then make sure to visit the channel page to watch more custom stuff onto the channel page hopefully that will convince you to subscribe the channel till then have a great day